Welcome to the Kerry Technical Institute video training series. This program will review the Doors 32 Doors for Windows software basic installation and configuration. For proper installation and configuration of the software, please view the modules in the order listed. This will ensure that the information needed for programming will have been created and is available. Modules 1 through 9 will guide you through the installation of the software onto the host PC and configuring the hardware and operating parameters for proper programming and operation. Modules 10 through 16 review additional features used for basic system operation, communication between the host PC and controller network, and manual control of the doors, inputs, and outputs. This presentation consists of 16 modules. This is module 7 of 16, door configuration. Door configuration allows you to define the operating parameters for each door individually. There are 13 total parameters. There are 11 parameters that can be set. You may not need to set or change all of these parameters. Open the door configuration window by clicking the setup system toolbar icon or from the setup pull down menu, select system, and then click the doors tab. Use the scroll bars to step through all configuration parameters and all doors. When accessing the doors tab, a pop up window will appear instructing you to configure the dedicated inputs and outputs before setting up the door parameters. Click OK to close this window. Dedicated inputs and outputs allows you to assign controller inputs to controller outputs to perform certain tasks. These assignments should be made before configuring door operating parameters. Click in the cell and enter a descriptive door name for each door. Descriptive names make event monitoring and report reading easier. Do not duplicate the door names, and the door names should be no more than 30 characters, including spaces. The controller door address lists the individual controller addresses and door addresses reported by the controllers during auto configuration. These fields are grayed out, therefore they cannot be edited. Door class is an optional setting. Operate doors functions can be applied to all doors in the same door class. Operate doors is discussed later in this presentation. Click on the pull down list arrow and select the door class that applies to each door, either interior or exterior. Door type options were enabled in the system options window. Click on the pull down list arrow and select the door type that applies to each door either a door, a gate, an elevator, telephone entry, or time and attendance terminal. Turn on the roll call track feature in system options to enable the reader type field. This feature is also used for time and attendance if enabled in system options. Click on the pull down list arrow and select the reader type that applies to each door. A standard door is for typical access control. An indoor typically only allows access into a secure area. An out reader typically only allows exit from a secure area. And muster is used to identify who has checked in to a specified reader within the system. Access enabled allows you to turn a reader on or off, enabling or disabling the reader for access control. If the controller is an EntryGuard telephone entry unit, access enabled can be set to off to disable the EntryGuard user IDs from unlocking the door. Click in the cell and enter the amount of time in seconds that the door lock relay will be active for a valid access request. Click in the cell in the open time column and enter the amount of time in seconds that the door can be open or ajar before a door held open alarm is generated. The open time becomes active 
When a valid credential is presented, an access granted command is issued by the controller. When a request to exit is issued, and when or when a timed unlock command is issued by an operator using the operate doors window in the door software. A door contact switch must be installed for the open time parameter to be operational. The system must see the door open and close within the programmed open time. If no door contact is installed, this value is irrelevant to system operation and can be ignored. The unlock lock time zone sets the schedule at which a door will be automatically unlocked and then relocked. Click on the pull down list arrow and select the time zone that, time zone that applies to each door. These time zones were previously programmed. The first person in feature ensures that an auto unlock door remains locked until an employee presents a valid card. Click on the pull down list arrow and select the FPI time that applies to each door. There are five values to choose from. Enabled, enabled 15, enabled 30, enabled 45, and enabled 60. The enabled time values allow a controller to look back 15, 30, 45, or 60 minutes. If a valid card is presented during the look back period, the door will unlock and allow that cardholder access, but still will not unlock for general access until the time specified by the unlock lock time zone. If a valid credential is not presented within the look back period, the door will remain locked at the scheduled unlock time until a valid credential is presented and access is granted. The door forced open held open columns allows you to define which output will be activated when a door is forced open or held open. Click on the pull down list arrow and select the desired output. The primary request to exit allows you to define the door's response when the controller receives a request to exit input. Click on the pull down list arrow and select the desired response. Unlock will unlock the door to allow exit. Disabled ignores the request to exit signal. And do not unlock registers the request, but does not unlock the door. This is most often used in a mechanical egress situation, depending on the installed door hardware. Auxiliary request to exit allows a secondary or remote switch to initiate a request to exit. For example, a switch at a reception desk. This will allow an administrator to track whether the door was unlocked to allow an authorized person to exit by primary request to exit or to unlock the door for a visitor to enter. Click the button to enable or disable this feature. This concludes module seven of 16, door configuration.